mark uh, the holes are here in the corner, so I cannot pre-drill them with my uh, with my electrical drill. So I take my wooden drill bit, center it with the hole. Yeah. Give it a little punch, so I have exactly the center of the drilling that I need, and it's not that badly wrong. Again, I head over to my drill press, drill the holes, and then we can put in the uh, threaded inserts. So, uh, the holes are drilled. Uh, I have my um, thread inserts here. Biggest screwdriver I have. Now, let's try out these things will hold into this, into this plate. So now, before I completely uh, put them in, I give it a little dot of glue so they won't come out if you unscrew the plate and change it over or something. I had a problem once before that I wanted to unscrew one of them and it's not the magic screw that come out of the thread. It was the whole inset that come out of the wood, not that great. So, a little dot of glue, and this won't happen. So, uh, the next part is uh, I have this plate here which goes uh, underneath these holes for the um, to hold the, the rudder lift itself in place. Uh, you can do this with uh, uh, with a washer and a, and a nut or so, but this is the proper way I believe. And watch else, go for broke. Now uh, I want them to be aligned, um, parallel and square, so that they won't won't look like this. Also, I want them exactly square. So again, I'm gonna use my MFS and set it exactly to the the outlines of these four triangles here, and this will stay all perfectly square, and we don't have a problem. That's also finished. Um, that wasn't des that necessary to make it with the MFS, but in this way they're all straight and I like it. So, yeah, why not? Uh, now, next thing uh, I want to put in the, um, the T slots, but before I do this, I go ahead, take my router, and uh, put a little deburring and a little um, uh, bevel on, on, all, uh, on all the rounded edges and also on the outline to give it a nicer look. So that's done. The mounting angles are in the correct place. So the next, all what you have to do for the router lift itself, just put it in there. Nip, uh, align it with the set screws and screw it down. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't that necessary to make this with the MFS, but uh, you know me, I like this attention to detail. So now the next thing, I want to install the, um, the T-slot, but before I do this, I take my uh, bevel router bit and 
deburr all these edges and give it a nice, a nice bevel on on all the rounded corners and on the outlines. Give it a, we'll give it a nicer look. So next step, I have to modify my uh, T nut rails. So uh, the one. The long one here is already the appropriate length. I just have to drill my holes and, and sink them. Uh, the shorter ones here I have to cut to the appropriate length and uh, grind me some radius here on the end so it, it will go all the way into this slot because we have 56mm radius from the wall bit. And, uh, I could go in here with a chisel and make it uh, make it straight, rectangular, but I prefer to round off the edges of this uh, uh, of this rail here. So now let's start with the cutting, and then we go ahead with the drilling. So I set up my cupix with my aluminum saw blade, and uh, shouldn't be that big of a problem. Small profile. Just uh, take it easy on your cuts. Aluminum a bit harder than, than your wood stuff normally. So now I'm gonna use my bench grinder to round off the edges. Now I'm gonna mark me some holes and drill them over on the drill press. So the nice thing about these rails is they have a little dent here along uh, the slot directly in the middle. So you just have to mark your length position and the centered position uh, is already defined by this dent. So I'm um, go ahead and use a 4mm drill uh, and afterwards I countersink it that the screw head is flush with the surface. So I'm um, using my countersink to deburr the, uh, the back, uh, back side of the, of the drilling. For the inner side I go ahead and use a bigger drill bit because I don't have a small enough countersink to do so. But with a 8mm drill bit or so it also works. Now our rails are finished, um, but before I screw it in, I use some polyurethane glue underneath to give it a really nice solid surface underneath and uh, it will give the, the rails a bit more rigidity. So that's it. Now uh, before I put it in the frame of my table itself, I will uh, take my sander and clean up all the markings and straight up the, the upper surface of the table. And yeah, then the next step is to put this thing together. Manufactured is everything. And now let's have a look how it looks in the end. So the rails are installed. Now uh, next step is to install it into the table frame. But before I do this, I give it a slight hit with the sander to remove all the markings and uh, give the, uh, the surface the last finishing touch. <laughs> Now on to the final step. So first 
I have my sheet metal frame here uh, for as a counterpoint for the set screws to adjust the height of the router table itself or the router lift itself, should I say. Then we have our nice main piece here and a lot of screws. So first I put in the four main screws. I like this black anodized screws, looking so cool, much better than the silver ones. So, and now we have our eight set screws here, two on each, each corner of the thing, to adjust exactly the height. Therefore, is the sheet metal plate. Otherwise, the the set screws would dig into the wood and uh, wouldn't help at all. Now I'll go ahead and uh, set the height of the table. For this, um, I'm going to use my uh, some kind of ruler here, and look that it's flush with the with the wooden surface. So you you have to give it a bit of pressure on the on the main screw, and. Then work against with the uh, with the set screws and repeat on all four corners. Of course. So now that this is done, um, uh, we just have to install our router underneath. So I. Look how this works and then we install this thing. So the router itself sits on this adapter plate here. Uh, I will unscrew this and put it on the table so it's easier to see and easier to install. Just these four screws here and We can work above the table, it's way easier. So, now let me get my water and we fix it on this plate. So, here it is, my nice Trend T10 router with 2000 watts. Should be sufficient for a water table. Now, uh, I have this, this chart here, which uh, says which, which router needs what, uh, what kind of screws and what kind of uh, holes in this plate. So for this particular one, I need the, the C-marked holes, it's a very nice plate, all the different router types are pre-drilled and uh, you have markings which one should uh, should use which, uh, which hole. So for this is the C one and I need three times uh, M6 by 16 millimeter screw for this. So it shouldn't be that big of a problem. One, two and the third one. So, yeah, looks kind of centric. So now, uh, next step is to fix this thing underneath the table. And for that, there you go. One, one step deeper. So, this particular 
uh, router sits uh, diagonal underneath the router lift, otherwise it would un interfere with this uh, axles and the uh, and the screw. But totally okay for me. Well, with this we finished the work on our round table for now. Uh, we already installed the water lift, we installed the T-nut rails. Looking good as far as I can say. Um, I like the water lift already. The adjustment from above the table is a very nice improvement. And uh, I like this feature a lot. Also you can, you can lock it to prevent it from moving. Uh, we have our insert plate here to keep the surface as, as near on the water bit itself as possible. Also with, with different diameters available. Now, uh, on the next part, we start building up our fence design, our new. Uh, of course, we can, we can use the fence uh, the, from the, from the capex uh, fence that we, we had on our water table mark one. That's also available, but I had another fence design in mind. I already have a bit of material here and we'll see how this works out. And also we are gonna install the digital readout for the, uh, for the height of the water lift. Uh, also an, a neat feature that I'm looking forward to. So, uh, but for now, leave me some comments. How do you like my new water table? Give it a thumbs up if you do like it. And uh, of course, stay tuned for the next part. And have a nice day and see you in the next project.